Yeah, yeah. Uh, but can you notice the soil on the top? Yeah. Right, the soil is also classed as a type of sediment. And what's happening up there is as the grass grows and as the grass dies and it begins to rot down, it very, very slowly adds a very tiny layer of sediment on top of that. And it very, very slowly builds up. We can measure it because it happens on a year basis as the grass grows, dies and rots. We can go and watch it. We can measure how much is being laid down each year and we can roughly work out how long it has taken to lay down that soil. Okay, the downside to it being here is that if you speak to the locals, and I met a, a lady, she was probably sort of in her 80s walking down here, and she could tell you that when she was a little girl, she's lived in Huntstanton all of her life, she could remember when the cliffs used to be all the way out there. There's a lot of erosion going on here, oh, yeah. and so that takes some out as well. So that erosion does lower the rate as well. So basically, that little soil is being laid down extremely slowly, and that process is the same process which is attributed to how this chalk formed. Very, very slowly, bit by bit, year by year, as it slowly laid down. But one of these deposits, I said we could tell how long it took. That's the soil at the top. You can measure it because it's happening year by year. We can observe it, we can go and watch it, we can see it happening, and we can physically see that it's happening very, very slowly. The chalk, we cannot. The process is ended. It has to be formed underwater. We do not know how long it took. We can't observe it forming. So we have to look at other evidence, outside evidence. We have to ask things like, what is actually inside the chalk? What is the chalk made from? Can we see chalk forming anywhere today? And how does that chalk match up with the chalk that we're seeing here? We need to go to outside sources and bring it all together and look at it. We also need to look at a big picture. One of the biggest problems in modern geology and for modern geologists is that you can spend your entire life studying a very small sea snail that is buried in that chalk. You can get a PhD studying that very small sea snail in that chalk and you know everything about that sea snail but you never stop to step back and actually ask how did that sea snail get there in the first place? And does this sea snail actually match up with the sea snails that you find in chalk on the other side of the globe in Australia? And when you do that, you begin to get a much bigger picture. And it's something which all of science is actually pushing people away from. I know that because I've been through it myself. I'll explain a bit more about some of the troubles that I've been having with uh, academic research and studies in university later. But for now, the important point is some sediments we can observe forming. When we observe them forming, they can be very, very quickly or they can be very, very slowly forming. But there are some sediments which we cannot observe and we need to look at outside evidence. That being said, let's head round the corner very slightly and actually have a look at the three different rock types that we find here at Hunstanton.